perhaps you've heard it said in recent years that the Dead Sea is dying. Now, what is meant by that is that the largest body of water in Israel is rapidly receding. And when I say it's receding, it's nearly impossible to comprehend how much water has disappeared from the Dead Sea in the past century. But there is one place where you can clearly see the magnitude of what is called an ecological emergency. Now, we visited it recently and flew a drone over land that not long ago was covered in salt water. We drove along the western shoreline of the Dead Sea and stopped about a mile south of Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Between 1900 and 1917, British researchers working for the Palestine Exploration Fund rode in a boat and twice marked the level of the Dead Sea on the wall of a cliff. You can still see the marks today. Those two marks are a reminder that people were already aware that the water level was dropping more than a century ago. I doubt they could have ever imagined what we're seeing today. Now, from where men twice marked the water level with paint while floating in a boat, the shoreline of the Dead Sea has now receded between a mile and a half and two miles. The surface area of the saltwater lake has dropped from 410 square miles to 234 square miles. This means the largest body of water in Israel is almost half the size of what it was just 100 years ago. Now, if you're a reader of the Bible, that means people like David, Solomon, and Jesus and his disciples saw a much, much larger lake. At the current rate, the lowest point on earth is dropping by three feet a year. A century ago, the Dead Sea was 1,280 feet below sea level. Today, the water is more than 1,400 feet below sea level. When we flew our drone over land that was covered in water in 1917, all the way to today's shoreline, we kept the drone's speed and altitude level. As you watch this video, note how the seabed drops away from the drone, giving the illusion that it was slowing down. The drone wasn't slowing down. Instead, the eroding skeleton of a seabed that was once covered by more than 100 feet of water was dropping further away from us. The reason for such a shocking decline? Well, barely any water is entering the Dead Sea. Until the modern era, the Jordan River fed a steady supply of fresh water into this saltwater lake. Now, modern-day Israel and modern-day Jordan need that fresh water to care for nearly 20 million people in both of their countries. Both Israel and Jordan share the Jordan River and use it for drinking water and irrigation purposes. What starts out as a mighty roar far to the north is barely a trickle as the Jordan River enters the Dead Sea nearly 100 miles downstream. For centuries, the Jordan would even reach flood stage as it reached the Dead Sea. But today, what you'll find in that area is a flood of mud. If you've ever floated in the Dead Sea, there's a good chance you've done so at Inbokak, where more than a dozen hotels host tourists from around the world. The water is very shallow near these hotels, where bathers float in the water, where they cover themselves with Dead Sea mud, and where they look for all the health benefits that are said to come from this salt-saturated water. But except for Israel's efforts to bring salt water to those hotels, all of those tourists would be left standing on dry ground. Today, great pipes transport water from the northern portion of the Dead Sea to the southern portion. And even further south than Inbokak, the Dead Sea factory struggled to maintain enough water in saltwater pools for their production of several products, including potash, industrial salts, table salts, beauty products, and kitty litter. What happens next is largely up to Israel and Jordan. For many years, there was talk of bringing water from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea through massive pipes. But this effort to refill the Dead Sea was called off in 2021, leaving those dreams dead in the water. In the meantime, the Dead Sea keeps shrinking, leaving sinkholes in its wake and frustrated ecologists wondering what to do. I hope you'll check out more of our videos from Israel on our YouTube channel, Secrets from the Ancient Past, and follow us. We've got much more to show you, and I love sharing all of those secrets from these ancient pasts. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Cook.